particular simulation, uh, starting with case one. It will initially come up as a completely black screen, so to get the star to appear, you adjust the exposure time to some value, hit measure, here's your data, bunch of noise in the background, and a star with number one on it. These controls have uh, been disabled for you, so you don't get confused. You just take the um, pointer, left click on it, draw or move it, and you'll get two boxes. A green box, which you place on the star, and a red box, which you can place anywhere on the background. Don't do that. Don't overlap the boxes. Make them well independent. And try and center the star reasonably inside the box, because you don't want to use a box that big when it says to use a sample size of 10 um, in the uh, instructions. You then go in here and type 10. And then you get a much smaller box, which contains proportionally more starlight than it does background. These are what you need to pay attention to. Uh, this is the number of counts in the green box, which includes background plus star. And that's the number of counts in the red box. If the number of accounts in the green box is higher than the number of counts in the red box, that's the number of net counts. In this case, 979 minus 902 would be 77 net counts. That's a level of detection. Uh, now maybe you want to make this sample size a little bit bigger so you can manage it. The star is not really in the center of the box, so that's 15. Uh, if you want to move the box, put the mouse inside the center of the box and try and center that star. Again, it's probably easier to start off with a big box like 40. Move it around and see how well centered it is. That's not bad. And then reduce the size maybe down to 20. You know, you want a reasonable box that contains most of the star in the center. And you can see that I didn't do a very good job there. Um, my net counts are less because I have proportionally more sky in it. Let me try and really center it if I can. That's a little better. And as I make the box smaller and smaller, let's go down to 12, you'll see the difference in net counts increases because I have less sky contamination, less background counts. And if I made it really small, say 5 by 5, then I get a very, very strong signal. So that's the way that you want to measure the uh, net counts for in this particular simulator. Note that if you click anywhere in the background, the boxes disappear. You, and then you have to re-enable them simply by left-clicking and dragging the mouse. So that's basically how you use this. Um, when you change exposure time, of course, the counts in the box are going to change because you're integrating longer in the detector. So that's 899 at that. When I hit measure, I increased the number of counts because the camera aperture is open longer. If I go down to a very short exposure, say five seconds, I have a lot of noise, uh, and my background counts are way down. I haven't exposed for very long, and I can barely see the star because the signal to noise is low because exposure time is too low. So those are the concepts that are trying to be integrated together here in this simulation. Later.